Going live in three, two, one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And if you zoom way in, the the audio waves look similar. As long as there's no nipple. Make sure this is hello, hello. Okay. It sounds so good. Awesome. It does sound really good. I'm really fucking surprised. <laughs> Leave me and my tiny mics alone. Wait, have you ever seen um <laughs> No, I love it. Have you ever seen there's this girl on YouTube. She lives in Canada. Why can't I think of her fucking name right now? But she's just she literally like the was blessed on her very first video but she's so naturally and authentically fucking hilarious and she like went she got like a million views on one video on the first video that she posted like within a week what? and it because it came up on my whatever. it was like her first video that she yeah made. i was like how the fuck does that happen i was like damn i wish that could happen to me. i think there's like a like a like an algorithmic way to go viral on tiktok if you're new to TikTok. youtube oh that's true because like when i made their i was accounts, talking about youtube though oh yes that like a you when, a when did this come out i don't know like two years well no it's 2019 I, I know tw it was 2019 so but i feel like everybody i feel like you could always argue that like oh yeah that was the time that was the year but that's only if you were like posting in the same happen to be posting in the same pattern that is more similar to what the algorithm is in that moment you know right and i don't think there was like an algorithm back then for youtube even around there is time. but it's it's more about pleasing the viewer to keep them on YouTube than making money because they realize that making money is because I feel like that's how it's frustrating for me as an artist on TikTok because I feel like I have to pay money to promote shit and Instagram because when I used to do it on Instagram I did it like once in a while before I like like right when I first started like pushing the river stuff mm -hmm. and the difference in what I got out of those promotions like value for dollar is insane I, I probably it's probably like in comparison to the promotions you do now yes I, or what i, I did fully attest to that like literally like i would say like 20 percent and of now what it's it like you're be. completely reliant where you kind of have to like do ads to get to your and you have to do it with the location base. and all that so so not am i only like ta trying to tailor like what i'm posting to a viewer i also have to like tailor a whole algorithm of what is going to who's going to promote to to get to the a most, specific niche to get so the can best keep conversion going. and all that shit yeah. too and trying to figure out conversion rates and oh my god <laughs> <sighs> Welcome to my life as a social media manager. I know. Well, <laughs> yeah. I guess I try to I try to be as lazy about it as I can where I like pay attention to patterns, but I'm not I don't want to get like really I just want to try to do it organically, which I feel like is what you're doing too. You're not really like paying because because I feel like it is, see, this is like the sour part of me working against me though. I do want to put that out there, but I do understand Well, people that. always talk about like quality over over quantity, but the thing is is like you need both. now but you need both, but here's the thing. The way we record, like, a, di a funny thing or, or like, us being cute, like, just to record it for ourselves is the, the, qu the quality of it by nature because of the cameras and shit that we have now. And also having Snapchat and stuff, you have, like, a way that you record stuff, like, a style naturally because that's just... You and how you want to, yeah, exactly. like, record your life. No, that makes sense. So I feel like... I've started to, I have to change them. Like, I already have the quality there. And I feel like that's also, I feel like I've seen a difference in you, too. You're just like, I know what the fuck I'm doing. I'm just going to post what the I want to post. In what I moment. Also, what I watch. The type yeah. of things that I, like, relate to and, like, want to, I don't know. And that's, but it's hard when I want to post a bunch of music and I try to figure out how to to connect in a tiktok way or a youtube way or an instagram way right. you know which i feel like that's the brain power that's where someone like you could probably help me but again i feel like you just kind of like not got to think about it too hard yeah it's like a mix of both like not like not overthinking the content that you come up with yeah but definitely thinking and overthinking when it comes to like who's going to be seeing this and who do you want to see this but like taking it a step further and it's great that you're even thinking of it on this level but um, the first thing should be that you should be making things that you want to make right yes yeah that's because people are only following you because they like you and what you make anyway yeah because i feel like that's also just like way more fulfilling it's just like having friends that you feel like like you for you and not yeah. because of anything else yeah but i and i feel like social media has become such a big part of our lives it's unavoidable and i honestly think i wouldn't have it if 
I didn't want to push the river thing. I think I, I would have it, but I, it would be, like, not on my phone all the time. That's how kind of how I am right now with Instagram. TikTok, I love that platform. Like, I'll use it whenever. I feel way less it's more restricted. Yeah, I don't feel like I yourself. have to post. Yeah, I feel like I could literally just post something that I would post on a story on Instagram onto yeah. TikTok. And it will do really well. And you, yeah, and you're, and because actually, when I think about it, most, the thing that does the best on my Instagram, like, how me getting new viewers that don't follow me and stuff yeah um things that do better is stories and when you like tag the location and stuff too and yeah. tagging location made a huge difference too and also you're immediately probably going to relate to that person a little bit more because they're at a location that you would be at yeah. no that makes sense you do have to leo i'm just saying like city wise you know <laughs> or colorado even like right i think you do have to like kind of overthink it when it comes to instagram's algorithm and make yeah. sure that the the demographic of people that you're targeting mm-hmm. is really going to care about what you're posting because if not then it's just gonna flop and do bad yeah so but that's also, the only part that i overthink but everything else that's that you because said is you're right about that because on. i feel like in instagram even though like unless you post a reel but even then i get pitched all of like my friends reels first yeah before it starts to really like get into the flow of like the something random and that's what's kind of messed up and counterintuitive because people don't go on instagram that long now i'm kind of getting bored after i see my friend stuff uh. and then they're showing me something that i should watch or something that's suggested now i'm swiping out of it and going mm-hmm. to tiktok yeah so. that's true even though i feel like TikTok does it just as often, but a little bit more in a sneaky way. Sometimes I catch myself watching ads. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, but but I it's also genius, right? Because that's a real content creator King that made out. something funny, and also like it, whatever aligns with, uh, like whatever that person's trying to sell, it aligns with the the creator, which I feel like you kind of have to do with TikTok a little bit more because of the free nature of it. And I feel like it's people don't like TikTok and it's hard because it is really vulnerable to like be posting like that all the time. But at the right. same time, I feel you like you don't know when to turn it off or like, what not to post. Yes. And I feel like, uh, but you don't like you, the creators that you watch that you feel like do post all the time, you, there's so many things about that person still behind the like veil. We're, we're such complex creatures. Yeah. Like to say, even if I showed you five minutes of my life, or an hour of my life every day, like, that's a little bit less, that's a little, that's like 12% of, if you're up, if, if you just, if you're up for just 12 hours, right? Yeah. No, 24. Well, but. Say, oh, well, no, uh, 24 minus sleep, 8, so yeah. But assuming you sleep, but still, one yeah. hour of 12, oh, that's a little bit less than 10%, actually. Yeah. So, that's, yeah. It does add up. So then, yeah, exactly. So then you're talking about, what, 92% of this person's life and this person's feeling and who this person is. You don't even see. And even then, that's all up to inter- interpretation, too. Right. I feel like people nowadays are, like, the older generations may have given, like, 5 or 2 or 1% before. So even thinking about, like, the 12% that we share now or thinking whether we should post about it or not post about it is so funny in comparison to, like, what they used to post or what they feel comfortable sharing or even yeah it's also interesting though too because i feel like the things i mean granted i was a lot younger but think about like when instagram first came out like i would i would post like it's also because i'm a spaz but i would be (laughs) posting like pictures of me going like this like real close up like all just to be silly you know like because i was actually kind of uncomfortable in myself so I was like rather make myself look stupid (laughs) instead of just looking stupid so you would say that that's not the real you no I would say that that was that was like a just a younger version of me being it was still vulnerable in a way though because I didn't really I I was like I'm gonna say fuck you I'm comfortable enough with myself to post a funny picture you know what I'm saying so it's kind of like both like I'm it but uh, by look, making myself look vi- more visually stupid. It's like, okay, what? You say I'm ugly, you say I'm stupid. Whatever. Okay, sorry, excuse no. me. Okay, well, um, we're trying to do a podcast, so um, if you... No, that's rude as fuck. You're a bitch, too. Yeah, she's like... <laughs> yeah, I did... Yep, surprise. <laughs> No, you're not on speaker. I just have super good hearing. Yeah, we're also (laughs) trying to record a podcast, and we're sitting in complete silence, so. (laughs) Yeah, she said, well, she heard you. (laughs) Who is that? My sister. Oh, oh, hi. (laughs) 
Yeah, she says, she, I'll tell her when we get off of here. Okay? I love you. Don't feel bad about it. <laughs> Bye. She's cracking up at herself. Oh, because she didn't think I was here. I do yeah. feel like that all the time. Well, she says that every time that she wants my attention and I'm, like, hanging out with a girlfriend. I do the same thing. She's like, well, tell her she's a bitch. Because, especially because I'm her sister, so she's like, I have I need all, you first. Yeah. I, well, not only that, she's like, I don't care if other people can't have, like, the right to you. Because, you know, that's, like, a boundary at the side with people. Like, yeah. you don't. She's like, fuck you, bitch. I don't give a shit. We're crossing lines. If I need you, you better answer. Shut like, up. Especially when it's, like, like within reason, of course. Yeah, you know? no, but that's, like, your ride or die. My yeah. dad is like that person for me, and I didn't even ask him to be. And I think that's why I have incredibly high standards for men. But like, if yeah. I call him, he'll show up. Yeah, and from any number, <laughs> does and, not matter. Yeah, and I, I feel like Leo. Go I'm like down. that for my sister. I mean, um, and I she does, she's been like that for me too, um, in certain ways. And but there's things that I can provide that she can't for me, and that's that. I'm a big sister though, so it doesn't even like for instance. Yeah, like, you don't even ask for those things. My sister did something stupid the other night, and I had to go pick her up, and she had two friends with her, and she's 15. <laughs> oh, God. And I was like, and my, I was like, Ugh. but my parents were, like, thankful. I was, And she was all stressed out because she knew that she got caught. Like, she was able to delay getting caught because she knew she could come stay with me, but she was, like, freaked out or whatever. Um... Like, she just needed a... She, no, she wasn't, like, in trouble or anything. She wasn't drinking. She wasn't high. Right. Um, because I, like, drilled and... T- I was like, oh, you better tell me. Like, I need to... Like, tell me right mom. now. Yeah. And I was like, and we'll talk about whether or not I'm telling mom and dad. <laughs> I'm not going to tell mom and dad, but we're going to talk about it. Right. Just because, like, I don't... I don't know. I'm not, like... I'm there to... I'm not there to enable. You're just there to help and be supportive. Yes, exactly. Yeah, no, I feel that. But, like, I don't know. I, I feel like... Um, yeah, I just love my sisters and shit. Um, <laughs> so, hold on one second. Because yeah, my gotta, dogs have completely taken over the At set. least they're not, as long as they're not barking. I know, but, like, y'all gotta chill. Because they're gonna want to climb on us and everything. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Out. Out. You're Go cute, sit though. Down. Bye. Go sit down. So, my guest today is a good friend of mine that I met actually in the back of an afters of a fashion show. She's a painter, a clothing designer, and most importantly, she's an R&B recording artist. She's been putting music out professionally for over five years now and has been singing and writing poetry since she was a kid. Welcome to the Gabby and Friends Show! Thank you for having me. Um, th- also, thank you for describing me as somebody... Uh, who's been doing music professionally for five years because I did not release my first song, which I, that's what I consider professionally, but I have been, I guess I was playing with people. You were like oh my playing God, it has been that gigs long. and what putting in like, put, you started seriously you putting that, out and music. I, I guess, I guess that's, I guess you're right. <laughs> oh my God. Actually, actually remembers how many years they've been in yeah, the game. Yeah. You're like, I have accomplished a lot. That's crazy. <laughs> Well, I feel like because every time you accomplish a goal, it's like something that I have to do really hard, like work really hard to apply, obviously, because I, every, you, it's like a new natural, I guess. Every yeah, time. like it's a new um, baseline every yeah, time. Yeah, and then, and something. your perspective like settles back. It's like, I don't know, there's always, it doesn't matter if you go high or low, there's always, it's got to settle back somehow. Right. You know? I started to visualize it as a scribble now because nothing's linear, but now I'm like, well, I it as I like see a it circle, as like, like you know those waves, yeah. When like well, you okay, play actually, music on YouTube and it like kind of like womps girl, out. Girl, that is That's a version. How I see it's, it. It's 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 so like this. If you're okay, so if you think about if you put in the information into a computer to even make a pattern like that, mm-hmm. you're talking about a several different planes, which are like dimensions and shit so life is there's lots of dimensions in life yeah and so sometimes as they all like move together it makes like a really nice beautiful wave circle thing yeah <laughs> no I feel and everything that. feels like a tilt a whirl in a good way <laughs> yeah have you ever like done one of those i've like only did them in math class but you basically just create a whole bunch of lines but it eventually creates like a circle yeah yeah, yeah exactly that's kind of how i see it yeah too. or like I don't know if you think about like when computers were really uh, juvenile, so to speak, like and the like floppy disk juvenile, or y- yeah, like than that. like think about when you watch a movie in the eighties. 
Okay, that and was it's, a big block. And there. yeah, and it's like green lettering, you know. So <laughs> yeah, like, say say you say you want to make like a little like ball just kind of like move across the screen. Like the amount of information that you had to input in order to make that happen. Like now we have software that does that for us. It's just remembering what they computed in the eighties, though. Yeah, it's basically like soft core computer coding back then. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. It is. Really or cool. yeah software programming or whatever so happy belated how was your birthday Thank tell you. me what you did um my birthday was great i went to wait how old did you turn 25 Woo! it's official your yeah. quarter Ooh, I'm whole s- quarter i know how does it feel I'm to like, be 25 it quarter life crisis time i'm just kidding <laughs> does it feel like a quarter life crisis no actually i'm did like 23 or 22 feel like a quarter life crisis yes that's what I've been feeling for our generation recently. Like, yeah. what they call, like, a quarter-life crisis to, like, the elder millennials and even the younger millennials and, like, boomers and all that. Y'all had it. What we're having at 20 through 23 is our quarter-life crisis. I feel like that's because, like, by nature, we just have way more social interactions. Mm. Because so life is just being experienced faster. Yeah. Okay. Or just, like, you're just getting the information faster. It's not even that it's being... it's. It, being experienced at the same rate it's just that you're getting all of it in a shorter time period than people did back then like you know even just being able to figure out how to find like a group of people to do music with back then would have been like you only talk to the people at a bar which people argue that that makes it more like genuine or valuable but the thing is is like you don't when you're at the bar you're not like most people aren't on their phone or whatever like you're genuinely connecting with people and then you get to find out like oh yeah i'm gonna post next time i don't know when we're doing this next event but i'll post it and i'll message you and like you're able to like i don't know forage and maintain so many connections connections. yeah yeah and you've learned so much from so many people like connected in multiple ways like you'll have somebody's phone number their email their instagram their tiktok like you're gonna see them at some point and yeah not only that i feel like so you would have so many more lost connections because you had like the only way to contact them is to call them and like like you can't sit and talk on the phone with all of your friends all the time every day because you got shit to do you know like you like we you know we have the phone calls but like to even just talk about even if it's just like for business purposes or for like maintenance purposes you know instead of like actually just being like oh this is when we're hanging out or or i would love to talk to you like let's catch up we don't have to hang out i don't know it's just you know the little computers in our pockets make us be able to get so much more shit done yeah so would you say (laughs) what do you what would you say our age is i feel like like not actually (laughs) but i guess i feel like again i feel like it's going to end up reaching a baseline because we all have a different expectation or standard that Mm. we hold people to Mm. now because of this experiences that we've had yeah so i feel like i feel like it would be i can't really uh uh it's like apples and oranges i guess yes it goes even it goes deeper than that because they were on they were thinking about different things yeah so i mean you're just i guess you're trying to relate to an older generation but i feel like that kind of like um um downsizes diminishes diminishes yeah the gravity of it having like the experience is what's real to our generation just like the experience is what's real to their generation and that's something else that i find really interesting is i feel like every single generation has had some sort of like government scare like environmental catastrophe or a boom of some sort a bo- exactly and like or a crash of some yeah sort, or some you know? sort of crash yeah so, and because i mean like all of these things happen in cycles too you know yeah whether I i've mean, been looking into that actually too and it seems like these things are happening more to us because not only are we able do we have the ability to record the data more and and actually figure out what it means we have the ability to just look at that if we choose so like on yeah we can like have, experience we can look at it and experience it on and you imagine it in your head and not only that you get it so much more like things that you would have not known about like the guy down the street whose brother killed his wife like yeah. like you wouldn't know about that as easily now like the guy you haven't even it's a friend of a friend of a friend yeah and you find and like that would not happen nearly as often if you didn't have this ability to like connect with so many people you're like oh i know them you know i feel like <laughs> that's why people i feel like every 
but he's like, oh, the world is so small, and it's like. It really is. It, but you, you, it is because of the amount because of. Because of how we made it, though. Yeah, and also, like, the exponential amount of, con- like, people you have access to, each person that you connect with, because, you know, like, they say that everybody you know is only five connections away from every person around you. Oh, really? Yeah, so, like, that. yeah. That might not be true. It might be. But, no, it I mean, sounds it sounds beautiful. It sounds <laughs> Well, it sounds right, though, because think about how many people you know, right? Yeah, that know other people. And you have access to all those people who have access to all the people that they know. You know, it just, like, it makes, it's, I think it's uh, a lot bigger of a number than I, I don't even know the fucking math. Right, it's some exponential (laughs) logarithmic curve or something. Yes, yes, yes. So back to the original point. How was your birthday? Fuck. Are you having a quarter life crisis? No, I'm not having a quarter life crisis. Okay. Yes. Um, <coughs> I just feel like. Also, y'all, we're both neurodivergent. I just want to put that out there. If that wasn't clear. <laughs> Lots of tangents. Did I um? You know, the say whatever. You, yeah, you could say you smoked weed. Yeah. I met her in the back of a fashion show. Sm- fashion show smoking weed. <laughs> I have taken the longest tolerance break that I have in my adult life. So, um, I'm not, I was, I was careful not to get violently high, but I feel great. But I, every time I fucking smoke weed, I get so, like, uh, ex, like, really deep into stuff. Yeah, I know it. I love it, To a point to where, I, it, to a point to where I don't even know, I'm gonna be laughing at myself when I watch this, because, <laughs> but you're I mean, like, how deep does it go, Lex? <laughs> I know, I know, well, because I'm a fucking Pisces, okay? I'm the ocean. <laughs> ain't no puddle. <laughs> I wrote a what song if, at Ain't That Deep. What if you were but... a puddle instead of, like, an ocean? Like, astrologically, what if your comparison was <laughs> at the water I... sign? <laughs> oh, man. I mean, realistically, I'm, like, a, a mist, a piece of moisture in mist. Like, I'm not even a water droplet. Oh. Like, I, well, I mean, if you think about, like, the massiveness, like, I'm very small, but then I'm like, oh, here it is again. It's coming. Where I'm, like, the universe. I'm just an experience. Like, we all... I don't know. Anyway. Pisces explaining himself. I literally... <laughs> the universe is... In, is the universe... Am I inside of the universe or is the universe inside of me? I guess is what I was trying to say. Got and, it. Okay. And so both, you can be both it's a true large at the same amount time. and the most minuscule thing yeah, at the same time. Yeah. And I feel like being okay with both. Like, holding it all inside of you and also... Being, like being a, a very a small part of it is both... Like, you need to be okay with both. Yeah. <laughs> because both are true. <laughs> Everything is the truth and everything is a lie all at the same time. <laughs> okay, my birthday was great. Um, I'm, so- I'm not gonna just move on. I guess the birthday sucked. I saw no. you on a plane. Come no. on. No. Oh, okay. Give yeah. me the details. And you went to Florida. I'll yeah. Just, I'll just tell the story of what I know and what I saw yeah. on TikTok, y'all. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> I went to um my very lovely friend, best friend, name is Brooke. You know. Brooke? I love Brooke. Brookies. We great. should have Brooke on. Yes, we should. If we all three had a, oh, that I would be a, be, that be a great episode. I this episode. to her, and she was like, oh, that would be really fun. Oh my god, Brooke's coming on now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for an episode with Brooke. She's a hell of a time. And yeah. Skip. <laughs> yes, and Skip. Um, uh, yeah, so we flew a private plane down there, and then took, I know, it was so fun. Uh, Chartered was, a private jet? <laughs> I know, um, her very her partner um um wanted to you know it's just something he was able to do and he and um truthfully we wanted to bring drugs and not take them through tsa so like mushrooms and shit and i didn't we did not want to get arrested or like taking weed and stuff yeah. but i was gonna take weed but i didn't but we just took mushrooms which we took enough mushrooms well and some other party drugs but no cocaine that's gross um <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> that's bad. Um, Just a bad time. Yeah, I mean... Anyway, that's a different story. We... <laughs> I fucking love you, dude. I'm sorry. I'm like, see? All right. We need to put I'm gonna keep you on the tra- faucet. I'm like... They, it's- I'm going to keep you on track. <laughs> So you were on the plane. You tried, I know. You tried I'm to like, I could have just... Yeah, anyway. There shrooms on the plane. Yes. Um. Where did you go? I went to St. Pete for a reggae festival. Anyway, my friend, St. Petersburg, very what? lovely. Yes, St. Petersburg. Um, we stayed at. Uh, oh my gosh, what was it called? 
and everybody there's one there's a hotel in Colorado that or maybe Vegas where it's like one of <laughs> it's okay I can't remember the name of the hotel. Okay, well, explain what was, was so great beach. about it. It was pink. It was fucking beautiful. There's, okay. It was like, the basement was haunted, apparently. I found out this after. Okay. And it used to be, like, some bunker, and now they have, like, a bunch of during something. I don't know. Wait, I Oh, it was a look- hospital. That's right. There was a hospital in the basement. The Grand Caesar. The Grand Caesar. Okay. So, I kept saying the Grand Caesar. Okay. And, uh... And it's Grand Caesar. Yeah. And... Was it a hospital before? Yeah, and so then so it, the now whole it's thing like was this a fancy hospital. little hotel. Yeah, got it. that got turned into well, a the, hospital. Yeah, the basement was, hotel. and then it got built up into the hotel. Oh, okay. So it was what like was the ab- first floor what in was the above bo- basement. Then? Nothing. So it was just like okay. yeah, like the building got built up. Mm. You know, so it was like the basement, the first very floors. shining remnant, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was. It seems like they have friendly ghosts. So I there was no like horror stories but because in the basement it's like a, a museum of like a bunch of people like artists and stuff that had played there i don't know i don't okay. I was didn't, it i didn't get a look, chance to check it out did it look nice was it like a museum kind of so i didn't go into the basement but the um you just know it's haunted and you did. were like i'm not fucking with oh, that oh wait maybe i did <laughs> i guess it was anyway the way it was built out like the entrance, I guess, could have been first floor, but it's like it's like Florida on the beach, kind of mountainous. So there was like it seemed like three levels. So I guess maybe I don't know if I was in the basement, basement, but because that I never was on a floor where you couldn't get outside. Like, Got walk it. Right, so right you outside. knew you weren't underground. Yeah. Um. But but what's so fancy about this hotel? Why it looked like chi- kind of why'd like why'd you pick it, or did she pick it? So um yeah. Brooke pick it? Or? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, I or I think that her boyfriend just wanted to set us up with like. A better like because we were we just bought like the um or she bought the the a package for us and so uh we had like a spot at like the marriott or a hilton or something um and we got vip which was really cool and there's only two stages so it was really nice not to have to walk back and forth but the hotel was kind of like it felt like modern beachy but without like the it had style mm-hmm. and oh my gosh when you walked in there was like these green it was like gold bars and like these green chandelier ball lights that were like spiky and glass. It was so pretty. I was like, I want to take those chandeliers home. I gotta see a photo of that. Um, I don't know if I took one. I think I did. How I'll long was the um festival? Like, how long did you stay? It was there for? four days, but we went for three days because the first day Three Eleven played and two other bands and um, uh, we were gonna have the our flight was at like six forty five in the morning. Oof. So she was like, we don't. We were thinking about getting a PJ, <laughs> he, and she was, like, asking if I would be okay with it, and I was like, I mean, I'm okay, because she also bought us first class tickets, this queen, and I was like, I had never flown first class before, so I was like, girl, I'm happy either way. Like, Got you, so it was, like, private jet or first class tickets. Yeah, and I was like, I'm not gonna... Oh, the first, cl- so you did and a I PJ there, you did a PJ there, and, and you were gonna do first class back, yeah, but it was 6.45 in the morning. That's what we did, no, 6.45 in the morning on the way there, and I did, the day before, I had, like, a packed fucking day. And oh, so originally you were supposed to go on a first class. Yeah, plane. there. Okay. Yeah. Got it. And yeah, it was a really cool experience. And I was like, oh, I'm just getting primed for my music career. Like, oh, well, Elle, you're like, this is how I'm going to live all the time. Like, I am living this already. Here we are. Were like, you focusing like on visualization at the time? Oh, what was hell going yeah. through your head at the oh, time? Oh, yeah. I was like, I mean, it's funny. I was literally, I, it kept replaying through my head because I was like, this is so stupidly punny, but it's like, it's perfectly, and you're like, I'm on cloud nine. Because you're like, I am, th- I was just like reflecting on like all the really cool experiences that I've had and like how I don't have, like, I can, everything I want's not going to happen the way that I think it's going to happen. And I have to be okay with that too. And I just have to be like, I'm doing the work, I'm putting the effort in, and I have the place that I want to go to and everything else will figure itself out. And I feel like when you have all these distractions and you get, and it's really easy to be like, you know, get down on yourself because by nature you just can't feel good all the time and you can't be a workhorse all the time. So you have to be okay with like the variability and understand that that variability is getting you there. And can work in your favor. Exactly. That time for you to rest, to take a step back and reflect is going to also make 
I mean, make the creative aspect better, but, like, the work itself, I feel like, is going to be a lot more methodical, a lot more, you know, I feel like you have to plan things, and sometimes that planning is, like, happening kind of subconsciously, you yeah. know? And, like, I don't know. <clears throat> what if, what, what have, what would you say is your, um, like, subconscious track to keep you in that mindset? Like, what things do you focus on to keep you in that head like what does your headspace look like i guess uh (laughs) i'm of the ether i would say it's very like my headspace is constantly changing but i there is like a baseline i suppose but like right now so i guess something that has always stayed true is that when i discovered affirmations like, but the thing is, is, like, even when things aren't, it's, it's like brushing your teeth. It's not, like, just when things are bad and you, like, expect this affirmation to help. Like, it's, it's something, it's like a tool uh, that you've learned, uh, a, ha- a habitual reaction that you've learned to when you're about to waste time hating on yourself for wasting time, you know? Like, yeah. Or, like, bringing yourself down, you know? And, um, like, my video game addiction right now, <laughs> I'm, like... I'm like, I kind of feel bad about it, but I'm also like, I. You're like not taking it as hard on yourself as you used yeah, to. Yeah, like I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm yourself. still doing things. I'm getting shit done. I'm just like not sleeping like I should be. But the thing is, is like, that's gonna, it's gonna, that, it, that is important to me. And so I will put it down for like several days. I, because I know if I pick it up, <clears throat> I'm gonna play it for. Like I can't. hours and hours yes. and days and days. I until What's the my longest hands get... you've gone. Um, probably like nine hours. Jesus, what <clears throat> is this game? But I I've done what, I, the thing what, is I've always is, done this game? with video games. Specifically, this game is called Stardew Valley. What is Stardew Valley? What I almost brought my Switch so I could show you. Ah, what is but it? I was like. I was like, no. I need I, separation I feel, from I do. it. I do. I feel like me having it. Oh, because it's going to be, I'm going to be like thinking about it later that I showed you or whatever. And yeah. it's going to make me want to play it. What is it? Is it like something that you like keep t- working towards? It's literally, it's, so it's kind of like or is it an, an analog, game? well, like a, like a, like a, um, what are those standing video games called? Like a, I don't know, a more analog version of a of animal crossing so like, okay. you have a farm and you like but it's all it's like completely different and there's like these little mini games <laughs> and like you it's kind of like a puzzle and um are you working towards a goal in the game you're working towards several but the thing <laughs> that's is, why i got your ass <laughs> You're like, oh, I got this done. Now I can do this. And oh, and, and, and here's the, here's the kicker with this one. So Animal Crossing is like real time. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like I've never the played time Animal of, Crossing before. so Animal Crossing, it's like you have your little farm. It's like a, you know, there's the point of the game is to enjoy it and make your town all cute. Okay. And it's like, but there's like, like a bunch that. of little like, like mini games. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's like, you have to earn money and like decorate your house. But honestly, that game especially, like I've spent oh, like, I don't know, at least a hundred hours playing that game definitely more i think i can look it up on my switch but i'm scared too so i haven't looked at it but like i will binge this and then put it down you know yeah um uh but animal crossing again it was easier for me to put down because of the fact that it was real time this game the the it's like i don't know what the exact conversion (laughs) is but it's like every 30 seconds is like 10 minutes of the day or maybe, in Animal Crossing? No, in Stardew Valley, this game. So not only does it have all of these different things, all these different goals for you to reach, you have day and night, and, like, the store is not open at a certain times, and it doesn't matter what time it is right now, so it's, it's in the game. Yeah. So so then I, it's, and like... It coincides so with you're your like, life. Now I have to go back, go to sleep, get up, water the plants, feed the chickens again, before I can go do this other little task that you have to do, but you're like, oh, let's water and feed the chickens, so that way I can... You know, I have food to eat when I'm mining and and then I have cash to buy when I want to buy more seeds for my farm. Or Are like, you living a double life in a video game? Oh, because like you're, yes. you're watering your plants in real life oh, and yes. you're watering your plants so in a video game so then and then you're feeding your fish in real life. So like this is where I'm like, <laughs> is it really wasting time? Because <laughs> I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. I have my binge and it reminds me that the point of life is to just fucking enjoy it and do all the little mini games. I think games, it's really good then. Get up, 
water your plants, get up, go to the gym. I just got a personal trainer. I've been going to therapy. Like, I... <laughs> yes, you are! <laughs> I love this. I love this. I mean, I had... There was a lot of other things that pushed me to do those things. But the thing is, is like, actually, the choice that I had to make finally happened. And I, you know... <laughs> what was the choice? It's to, like, you know... Stop staying up all night. I mean, I did I did my little game. But, like, <laughs> I would just go downstairs and I would work on a project and I would stay up all night. But my work is, I'm like, it's almost, I just burn myself out doing that. And I had to figure out a more healthy way. And I have been, you know. I mean, now it's, it's hard for me to be in my basement. I mean, I have, like, a walkout area, but it's cold right yeah. now. Yeah. And um, it's about it gets to get dark warm early. Now. It is. I'm very excited for that because it'll be a lot easier for me to spend more time down there. But it's hard for me to go down into the basement during the day when there's, like, people in and out of the house, walking by the house, the dogs, like, my plants. Yeah. <laughs> my fish, my spiders. So I'm, like, so I thought about, and I don't want to, like, take projects upstairs because then I leave them up there and then it's, like, I need to keep it contained. But in the summertime, I can take it out back in the backyard. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get some water. Oh, okay, yeah. Water break. <laughs> I have a Brita over here, but you pro it's like a Tetris to get to it. Huh? I have a Brita over here, but it's like a Tetris to get to it. Oh, it's okay. I'm not worried about the My third eye is hardened, unfortunately. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't actually believe that the water can harden my third eye. I'm just no. kidding. <laughs> just kidding. You gonna have so many people in the comments coming after you. I know. I know. I, I don't know. I I know that Honestly, there's a lot of people that charge their water and all that bullshit. I'm Just make sure like, your water's clean. I feel like it's kind of one of those. Yeah, not only that, I feel like it's kind of one of those things where there's so many other things over. There's enlightened monks in Tibet, and there's enlightened and monks they, in India, and they have the dirtiest water. So do not. Come yeah, for me literally. With also, this little like, baby ass fluoride, you and eat tell Twinkies, me that like, it's gonna fuck that, your brain up. I don't it's know. Not. Or like any, or like you know, really processed foods in general, like. I, yeah exactly i feel like we're hurting like our bodies more with that food than we are with the water oh we're for drinking. sure and also like we're not dying of fucking bacterial diseases all the time so yeah. like i think i would take that over this but because also like i don't they say that like your it, it does like calcify something your whatever gland but your the thing is, is like but that's that's a problem right there because you assume that your consciousness is in your head that's ego. Your consciousness does not exist inside of your head. Your they eyes your eyes are in your head. That's it. They don't want to talk about it. Yeah. They don't want to talk about it, though. Damn, no, that's deep. I didn't even think about it that way. But yeah, no, that's, so that's That's why. even more affirming to say that, like, no, it, it can't. Yeah. It has no effect. We're just a vessel, and we chose to come down here. Yes. So, no, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, we're just having, like, we're just, con we're all consciousness having an exp a, 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 a experience inside of a body and it's pretty cool sometimes but like you got it i mean it's like having you know going on taking a trip you know like you're gonna have some moments where you're like whoa this is heavy but then you're like and then you get through it and you're like wow i'm elated right now and i feel right. like that's life too that's why pe it's so beneficial for people to trip too i think but that's a different i feel like some people shouldn't leo hush I, I feel like some people shouldn't trip, but I do think it's beneficial. I agree for the for right person, for the right people. I mean, yeah. not it's not a one size fits all, but I think that that's why it has people. Have, so many people have been like this has been so beneficial. But right. I feel like people also get it's also has been negative because I I mean I'm guilty of this too, where you like like put try to put so much meaning in it, all of it and like. You forget the, the, what your purpose the, is the, and what the, you actually are. Well, the thing, the, the, what the meaning of it is, is that it's all just your experience and your feeling and none of it is that, like, it's not that deep. Like, yeah. it's, it's, or even if it is that deep and I've actually gotten way more, but like, it's existential. Like, it's, it's again, the, is the universe is outside of you or it's inside of you and you have to be okay with both. It's the same right. concept. Yeah. It is that deep, but you visually can't see it so yeah, like how we're 3d beings and we can see things in that's a 2d smile. way we can't see anything past our perspective so. yeah yeah and that's also what's really cool about the experience too yeah you're like you it, it is very individual yeah like you are just like everybody else and you're also you're your completely own thumbprint at the same time like again duality baby <laughs> 
it all un ends up coming to one. I'm, like, trying to pull up your LinkedIn because it's the cutest little bio. Oh, my God. And <laughs> I haven't updated that in a long time. I, just, I was like, I'm a professional. Well, I, it, it's a perfect segue into my next question. And I'm so mad. Why is it not coming up? <laughs> uh, I'm going to just hold on. I know what I can do. Just go on LinkedIn the app. Okay, but the reggae festival, I went there to go see Pepper. Who's well, Pepper? I went, um, Pepper is like this uh, reggae ish rock kind of sublime esque band. It, like, they sounded more sublime, like, on their first album, I think. Um, but they kind of like found their own sound. But they, they, and they are not sublime at all. Like, they're obviously Pepper. <laughs> and they, they put on such a fantastic show. I've seen them like three times. I saw them for the first time when I was 16 or 17 at Reggae on the Rocks here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, I could tell that the altitude made a big difference because although I was really close to the speakers this time, but I could tell his Wait, vocal the difference was so much what? better. Like his vocal, like hitting the notes and stuff. I could just tell he was getting out of breath. When I saw Arctic, Arctic Monkeys, it was the same thing. Oh no, that does make a lot of sense because they're not used to. Yeah. And also like, Red Rocks is a really big fucking sick ass venue. So I, and I feel like that's a, such an accomplishment for an artist. So I feel like. Really? I feel like it's a small, like in comparison to the other bigger cities, I feel like it's a smaller venue. It is a cool venue. Uh huh. But like I feel you've like been looking forward to it like those your whole life. Those pictures for your yeah. portfolio as an artist, though. I feel that. That is. Woo! I feel that. I feel but that. also like the because it's, it's a natural amphitheater. Girl, too. what is your name on freaking LinkedIn? Because I looked this up on my on my um. Oh, hold on. Is it? My, it might be my real name, which I, I don't usually have totally public. It's not that hard to find, but my real last name. Yeah, but they put on a fucking amazing live show. And and also, like, so that the venue that I was at, it was a festival, oh, and it was a smaller name. stage. That's why. It was a smaller stage. And so, like, there was, I mean, there was, like, a tenth of the amount of people at this show than it was at Red Rocks, because that shit was packed out. It was so cool. And, and so they're also, cool. like, right I next. I didn't hear you. Wait, like, there's Pepper, more you were people saying, at I was saying Red that, Rocks? Yeah, that I was saying why Red Rocks is, at, is like, like a hallmark venue for does a lot of artists and also because you'll usually people stack up like a lot of really good artists together so you're backstage with like you're crossing paths with you know people that are probably a lot more popular than you are but you're just kind of you're like in the outskirts so like the mainstream essentially like yeah you're gonna if you get a venue like that as a smaller artist you can be with somebody yeah you can meet people who, who know the people the five connections bullshit you know like it's all about me. It's not even necessarily about meeting the damn bands. It's about meeting everybody else. Right. In backstage. Well, you know? I can see how that's beneficial for the smaller <coughs> artists, but I'm just trying to wrap my head around why is it, um, why is it a big venue for a bigger artist? Just because, again, it's, it's, it's like, it's, um, I mean, first of all, it seems that way to me because I grew up here, but also, like, it is one of those things where, it's a natural venue that has existed. It's an old, it's an old venue. Like it's been, I don't know, since like the fifties or something. Okay. So, um, and I think it became an amph amphitheater a little bit later. So like all kinds of these band, like really, I know, you know some big people have played there. Yeah. Hall of fame people that have like come through and you get to play the same stage as them. That's why it's like, it doesn't matter that it might be a little bit easy. It might seem easier that it's, book to you because you know our artists in Colorado who know those people so it's closer to you Got it. but you, you don't realize how close you are to it <laughs> and that's why I'm like fuck this shit I'll meet the right person yeah. like because I'm sure that I've crossed the right person several right. times but right. no I've had a few friends that have played on Red Rock stage yeah exactly <laughs> and, like, it, it's a big deal for them but I just like it depends on the from show other people depends coming on the time. outside in yeah. I just I want to understand if they are looking at it as like this big show what are they looking forward to? And that makes well, a lot and of also sense. I think that it like like it can be a big stage, but if it's not the right time too. But I mean the the probability that it is the right time with Red Rocks is a lot higher than a lot of any other venue. Like yeah, that makes a it, lot of sense because yeah. like they're gonna make sure you can show up and show out if you're gonna be there. Yes, one thousand percent. But on to this LinkedIn yes. bio because I want to get into like your artistry and I have some direct questions for you. Um, 
So the river is a rising <laughs> hip hop and R and B artist based in Denver. Um, I'm gonna just go down to like the the end because it's the cutest little thing. Um, I think that's the one that I haven't updated. It's like an <laughs> originally up- a marching band nerd. <laughs> that is the one I haven't updated. That was like a first draft one because I had someone help me write it on Fiverr because uh-huh. I was like I don't even know where the fuck to start with this. Girl, if you don't get AI to type it for you. Well, you know? okay, so now I've learned some things. Okay. So, yes, you're right. But tell me about this. Mar- were you actually not marching band? Oh, yeah. I did um, marching band all four years of high school. Oh, wow. I How did in- you get into that for middle school? So, I played clarinet all through middle school. And I also picked up... Well, I played trombone first. Uh, I At what age? Um, 10, 11. So, I was trombone fifth, at 10 and 11. Fifth grade, yeah. Well, I switched. It was probably just for a few months on trombone. Like, I understand how the instrument works, but I switched to clarinet because I tried. Those are the bo- two instruments that I, like, tried out. Uh-huh. And I chose clarinet because the boy I liked was <laughs> chose clarinet. And then, or no, I chose. Together. No, I chose trombone. And then, but I don't. Oh, I remember that just being, like, something that pushed me to, to actually like switch because I was playing trombone and all the other kids were really not into it they like hated their lives playing like they did not want to be in band class it's a heavy them. instrument and it's very like you have, a, to, you have to you have to be able to pierce old? your lips to like because I know like when you and play a, a trombone, clarinet uh mouthpiece is quite large well like so when like you, you have to use a lot of breath to make that when you play like a clarinet instrument. and like a flute there's like a, a, reed. a reed but yeah. does that is that occur in a trombone or like no, any of so those? That's a, so a trombone is a brass instrument, and typically when you refer to a woodwind, it it um, has a reed in it, which say flutes. You Got know. it. Or but I mean, then there's a few other instruments, but like the mainstream, like like oboes, double reed, and Got so it. it's incredibly hard. But is it like to intensive to? play with your lips in the same way how it is with the flute because like my friend played the flute and she, my, her her sister it's, played the it's clarinet kind of hard to compare because flute takes like flute takes a lot of air but only to ma- play the note well not to get the note out mm. and also like the the slower you blow blow the air and the shape that you blow the air is gonna yeah make like kind of makes it all wavy to, and stuff yeah it makes a it's a lower octave so like then being able to blow it at the like catch the next like wave that's gonna make a sound um which is gonna be the higher octave or whatever you blow the um blow it faster and you have to do it like that's what's cool about flute is that you have to use your breath and like shorter and faster i think cool about flute i was never very good at flute i because clarinet was my main instrument but um i'm i did color guard freshman year uh junior and senior year i marched clarinet because i my sophomore year because i switched schools and they had a clarinet that dropped out Mm -hmm. and they had already written the dots like written the show so everyone had a place Mm -hmm. and so i just basically took the place of the person that dropped out and i couldn't like even if i want if i if i wanted to march that year which i was like i was like i want to i was like well if i have to because i wanted to do marching band so (laughs) i actually tried out for palms that year and they fucking i did fuetes on the like, I had never done a fuete. It's a pirouette where you kick your leg out to keep it going. Yeah. And I had never done that before. And they didn't put me on the team. A ki- there was 4,000 kids in the school, and there was eight girls on the JV team. And the fact that they taught me that on the spot, I feel like that was literally, though, because the next year, that coach got fired, and then there was 30. And, like, they absolutely should have put me on, especially for JV. Like, maybe I wouldn't, whatever. But that was the universe looking out for me because that was not my path. Got it. I know, like, you would have been very, around a different crowd? I probably wouldn't be a musician right now if I hadn't done marching. Like, I, I, I feel like I really, truly understood teamwork and... And, I mean, there's lots of other things that have gone into my, you know, Yeah, no, story. but what, what but like, resonated? I feel like with marching band is teamwork and dedication and then how it feels when it fucking pays off. And when you, when you perform something and when you put your soul out there and how good it feels when you're like, I did it exactly the way that I envisioned myself doing it, yeah. you know? And, and, like, I remember one show I did. I think I was a junior and it was... This is a marching band show? It was quarterfinals at the Air Force Academy. And, like, my whole, like, the whole band was, like, crying with each other. And, like, the band. After? Yeah, like, we we got off the field and we were, like, because you just know. And especially when it's, like, a huge group of people. It's so, like, I don't know. And. Oh, you're getting emotional right now. (laughs) 
No, oh. I feel that. I used to play um, in orchestra in high school or in middle school and high school. And when we would do, because like we play or we play like at, for our school, but we would also compete. Mm-hmm. And when we would do competitions and we would play, they would play back our sound. And I would like be, I would, I used to think every time I'm like, that's somebody else. Like that's Atlanta Symphony. That's not us. And she's like, no, that's y'all. And like, you hear the, the cellos come in and the bass, you're just like, and I'm like a second yeah. violin. So like, I'm only, or I'm a first violin. So I'm only hearing the, um, melody. the melody. Yeah. But when the harmony comes in, oh, and like the beat drops, oh, you're for like, sure. Oh, for sure. And we got Girl, emotional. I exactly how that feels. Especially because clarinet is like very similar in, so like, <laughs> do y'all play mostly harm uh, melodies or harmonies? Yeah, but well, because um, it could probably both. switch because you're both. in band. It's both. So like, and so I orchestra's was orchestra's very like secure in that way. Yeah, and I, I used I, to play in a full orchestra too. Oh, me I too. Love I love that. that too. We played Harry Potter in our uh, full orchestra. Oh my god! And like, I cried at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I mean, I also had moments where I had solos where you had like stand up and like first chair. I was fighting. Oh, wow. I was fighting for my like me. And it's you were first now, chair. Um, oh yeah. Oh and it my was, gosh. I mean, I wasn't, like I never made the top bands because I like, I Girl, like, gosh, knew you're how so to play. that's still really cool. Thank you. I mean, like I, but the thing is I was like always fighting first chair and because first chair couldn't stand the fact that I wouldn't like chill the fuck out. They would always fight me back because they were like, they, they knew that I was going to, especially sophomore They knew you're going to work for it. So they had to work or, for y- it. Yeah, too. exactly. Exactly. So, I, it, so yeah. Was there that, any like, like other childhood, um, like intro introductions into music before playing yeah. the clarinet oh yeah i mean my my dad is was literally always listening to music and i feel like um uh like we'd go to stores and shit and he still was always listening to music and he still does this if i'm ever around him he's like he'd be like who's singing this right now <laughs> what's what album is this off of what's and he he is a really good singer too actually he's just and he doesn't believe it and it's funny because i didn't i had to work to believe that like i was writing songs and singing and i and i was like i'm a, I didn't you write poetry too before okay. yeah and i was like the way that i tricked myself into that is i was just like i'm just doing poetry and no one's telling me not to sing it like i i was not really like it took me a while to be like i am a singer like and i would say it to people and didn't believe it for a while but like that's also i was like you know, that's just me trying to hold myself back. Well, yeah, like, tell me more about, like, I guess, be, like, you're, you're an amateur artist at that point. What is, like, the precipice or the, the threshold that you have to step through that you did that made you're you You're just doing it because you like you're to like do a, it? No, for you personally. So, Ugh. like, you're an amateur artist. What was that threshold that you had to cross for yourself that made you, there like, were many. believe that you're a professional artist now? There were many. And I think that my most recent threshold that I crossed, there were many. And the most recent threshold that I crossed and that I showed my ass earlier with it was the fact that, like, I released my very first song professional, like, like on all platforms, July or June of 2021. So it's been like a year. It's all wait. Yeah, it's right? 2023. It's two years now. Yeah, it'll be two years in June, and I've released um, eight songs, and I have four or five coming out on my EP, and I have two more coming out before that. And tell I have them, like how, five tell them the how many plays you have with your little eight songs, though. Um, <laughs> actually, let's see. Yeah, let's look at these current streams. I mean, she's very humble, y'all. <laughs> Also, where can we like follow you and find your music and stuff? So my Instagram is the River Sings, and I have all of my links in there. But um, if you look the River up on any platform, Mo- Spotify and Apple Music, it's a circle with a blonde girl wearing something orange. Okay, that's me. Because there's there's quite a few of the rivers on there. But depending on what kind of music you listen to, or like what location you're in, what's the genre that it's going to be under so they know what to look for? It's got um rap hip-hop and pop and electronic <laughs> all Got under it. there so genres if they just look they just look, type the river click artists instead of like all and then it should be within the first 10 to 
15. Sometimes it's like in the first three to five. So <laughs> do all of that stuff. But you'll really like her music. I hate like comparing my friend's work to like other artists. But um, when I listen to your music, it reminds me of like a feel of Alina Baraz's kind of music. Oh, thank you. And uh, hence of Miley Cyrus. Like I love like her when she gets into her pop R&B bag. I know. And um, very soul like she can hit those notes and be really twangy like Amy Winehouse. So very, very much check her out. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I did have, I just wanted to like break this up a little bit. I had a little segment of some Spitfire questions that I wanted to ask you. Okay. Do you want me to say, so I don't know. Oh yeah. Current streams right now. So ours has 15,684. That's like what? That's 20, 25. This is all time. I feel like this so, is. Well, it's all time. Does it tell you? Yeah. That? Yeah. If it feels like like over thirty five thousand views, y'all, or thirty five thousand plays, streams, streams. Yeah, plays, streams. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't know the 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 river needs the more streams. <laughs> yes, please, please l- listen to her music. <laughs> okay, so um, I have ten Spitfire questions. Okay. Fill in the blank. The one thing I can't leave my house without is my chapstick. When I want to feel empowered, I listen to any female <laughs> the best advice i've ever received is mm, nothing everything is temporary my dad says that a lot i like yeah. that one my favorite way to practice self-care is mm, take a bath <laughs> the book that had the biggest impact on my life is oh many uh, honestly, the, I feel like the biggest turning point for me was, um, you are a badass. I read it when I was 19 and I realized like how bad my internal talk was. It was, yeah. But now I read it. I'm like, this is so cheesy, but I mean, it's, it did, it did the thing. It did its job. It, yes. And you were worried in a at. big way. It, it really connected me to everything else. Like I, that's, I feel like through that, I found a lot of different things that I now have like cultivated and learned about too. It's awesome. I love that book, too. If I could travel anywhere in the world, I would go to... Uh, Greece or Italy. When I need a confidence boost, I wear... Mm, a crop top and booty shorts. <laughs> my go-to workout is... In my house. Um, well, sometimes out. It's got to be hot enough. My go-to workout? <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't even have to be a workout. Dancing. <laughs> like, like putting on a song and just getting weird you know got you like, like ec- ecstatic dance i do that with like uh electronic music or like um what is it called i always forget it's it's a it's a form of electronic music dmb ah uh, yeah oh bass. yeah like, oh yeah just put a good dmb song drum and bass song and, I'm, and get I'm like gone. a hula hoop Ugh. yo I've been, and I really <laughs> I've been listening to DMV like since I was a kid. Yes. And I would just be like, you know how on direct TV you could go to those music channels? Yes. I would just like click through them and then dance differently to like Oh one. yeah. So oh like my- salsa would come on. <laughs> I remember doing that too. Oh my Is that god. An Oh my god! I would just switch the dance up and like change the channel like every. Well, because seconds. that's so weird. Because like w- I mean, I remember <laughs> being so excited when the MTV music videos would start playing, and it's like we're in that really weird age range where like, like, you know, we when we were childs in like t- in seats, we weren't like it's such a completely different world in that sense of like information and making things happen because it's like play that one song and it's like you would innately know that. Like, the, the radio plays the music. Mom doesn't play the music, or dad doesn't, or whoever in the, like, you know. Yeah. And it's just crazy, like, being able to have that right there, right now. Mentality and, versus them back then. Exactly. Yeah. And so I feel like for our experiences, that kind of gives us, we kind of. That's we have more right. range now, because yeah, I'm listening to so range, many. I, I would like, not have listened to electronic or Skrillex or anything of that sort if I And I, I feel like that's why we can understand, that. like, the rela- or the relationship to the generation above us and the relationship to the generation below us a little bit more. Yeah. Then I feel like people younger than me can or people a little bit older than me can. I for sure. Yeah, no, I feel like there's a lot of disconnect between that like, generation I just, and the I just don't understand. It's like, well, because you're being stuck actually because i i that's how i was with tiktok like i was i was like and like almost every time something comes out and i've noticed that about myself i'm like hmm do i really want to be the type of person that like 
gets on the very tail end of the cart train and then I'm literally like, same oh. same or do i want to like actually take advantage be like, a pioneer I even yeah or do i yeah do i want to or like that's that instead of me going to i mean granted you know ai but the thing is it's like ai is going to be making eons people, past us and be, but it's going to be allowing people to be like it's like oh well people on fiverr are losing their jobs because you're not hiring personal assistants anymore because now you can get it done well it's like okay well now the world has to change and we have to figure out how that person like what is that person going to be doing now are they going to be able to focus on things that they like to do more are they going to be pushed into having oh my god well wait hold on let me show you this video because this literally checks on everything that you're saying because this girl was talking about like if we have more time to do things what does that actually mean why is that a bad thing yeah we have all of these things that are now automated and now we to sit alone with our thoughts oh my god we don't have to be these workhorses like i just don't understand like even even like you should be a workhorse for the shit like literally if you're not doing shit that makes you feel good every day i feel like that's people take it right they take take it for granted they well yeah the thing is is like feeling good means getting your ass up and being disciplined yourself and going to go take a shower or going to go work out and it's like you're you're focusing on the good feeling you're like remembering the why of like getting up out of the bed in the morning and and why and so then you and then you the the things that the hobbies that you interest yourself in and two you're like do i actually like doing that you have to you have to be like you do not you're not convincing yourself that you like it you're you have to actually do the work to find what you like. Like, no, <laughs> she was saying that I, I couldn't find it, but she was basically saying, what is the world going to come to when we stop doing things based on survival and just doing them because we Oh, to? yeah. A ma- that just gave me chills, a mass exit time. from sur- survival mode, because, yeah. We That's know, what we're in. We are, like, our mentality as humans, it's so crazy, because we're we're supposed to be lucky that we're not in survival mode in another country somewhere that we we it, i am grateful that we are here but it's just sad to me that there's all that happening and and we have we as humans can figure out a way to stop it i can't fix it but like us as a collective when we put our heads together we, we definitely can make the can. world better for we've done so many other things yeah and like like you were saying people in india kids in india drink like dirty water. dirty water yeah at the yeah game or in mexico or in and like, all these collective Th- things thailand no like, for real it's in uh, especially out in the because i mean like yes these places have very developed cities and very developed areas but there's places that are not like like what's funny is i think a lot of americans and people that have like people that have traveled before but they didn't really actually recognize what was going wrong mm. in the world around them until they realized how mm-hmm. fucked up America was. Because right. we have Flint, just as the Ganges River is dirty for spiritual practices, ours is just dirty from negligence. Yeah. We have people that are living on the street way more, and our median of, like, our GDP rate, like, this, hold on, let me actually pull up this girl's well, video. Because she, like, she went through it. Well, also what's really I- important to point out, though, too, is that, like, I think that we're we're supposed to be okay with the fact that poor people live better lives now than they did in 1920 because it's true because people back then I mean we're probably like there are people sleeping on mud floors next to the pigs because they didn't so like that a poor person now is going to have a better living situation and whatnot but again we've reached the baseline of we're a different trying, baseline we're not that's still not okay because look at how these people are living and what we do have access to and the resources right. so, and we're not using it we're still letting people like live in the poorest conditions that we have to offer as a country like i just don't here it uh, is and also, there's a lot of things to go, like, Here, homelessness is specifically, like, you've been failed so many times this. before it's that. It's gonna go up there really quick. Oh. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm so quiet. Okay. I love when people are like, oh, so you would just give everyone universal basic income? What if people didn't work? Yes. What if they didn't work? What if they didn't have to work and then people could just do what they wanted? Like, would you really just sit on your couch all day and do nothing? No, you would get super bored. You would do something, but it wouldn't be something that you're doing just because you don't want to starve. And that would be great. Can you imagine all of the things that people would do? And then this girl yeah, going through our GDP. robbing people because they're so desperate that they need um, to feed themselves and their family. About people complaining right? about how hard it is to live in America and everything's more expensive in a third world country with a Gucci belt. And I just want you to know one thing. You are not crazy. That is fact. We rank 25th in the world for economic freedom. 
129th in global peace. The land of the 15th freest. 15th. 17th for quality of life. 20th for gender equality. 18th for healthcare. But we spend more than anybody else. We have the lowest life expectancy for men and women of any country with a high GDP. We oh, yeah, that exactly. Yes. Quality. 29th in work life balance. No surprises there. Pay attention because this is a weird one. The scale for this one says that the number one country has the highest rate of poverty. What that means is 54 countries have a lower poverty rate than the richest country in the world. We do, however, rank number one in a few places. We are absolutely killing the game in the cost of college. Number one, baby. Scotland tried, but we do have the highest rate of overdoses. And you can so basically, that you live in the richest country in the world. Basically, I think so, okay. everybody realizes how ghetto America is, and then they're like, "Oh my God!" But we have to think about the world, and then it becomes too much. When in reality, it has always been this messy, and people in the house were screaming and calling. Yeah, because I mean, <laughs> think about like how, like, I don't know, maybe, maybe the ratios to like places in europe are a little bit different but the thing is they have if they have a baby like they, they're not going to go into financial ruin no if they go to they college have medical they're leave. not going to financial ruin right they're not now like literally chained to the man like that is like debt in general and then being told that you're like you have to have debt in order to build credit because and it's like i and we're the only country that does that i'm fucking weird about that shit i really don't like i have I've had all three of my credit cards closed because I stopped using them on oh, accident. Wow. I didn't mean to, <laughs> but like they were literally like, uh, it's like you haven't used it for six months or whatever, so they automatically close the account. I did not know that happened, so I'm going to continue to use. My well, credit because card. one of them was a secured card, and oh. the other two was just like some little ones that I got when I was like 18. I had between all three of those credit cards, I had a $900 credit limit. So they were like, they were like for the stop it. <laughs> You're like, I'm so I literally, big shit. If I wanted, to, yeah, if I wanted to fucking go into credit card debt, like nine hundred dollars was was I didn't I never signed a paper do. that let myself go like you know. No, that's where my biggest fear is. Like when people are like, oh, I have fifteen thousand dollars in credit card debt. I'm like, Girl. I know. I'm like, your APR rate must be damn good because no, over they got my it. They got body. it at the wrong. They got it the right time, but the wrong time for them. Ugh. So like that's that's the only thing that I feel blessed about. I was given a low APR rate because mm -hmm. of the recession that we we're in. But if I had gotten it any sooner, mm. I would have been given those big amounts. Yeah. And I would have spent them and then to end up in the circumstance but that still, we're now in. It doesn't matter. Like even, even like 2%. Like it is just, you're literally burning money. Like you're still paying another company because you wanted to borrow. Like, you, like, I don't know. Like it just, it made sense. If like you think loan, about it to, different. like, your parents. Because, like, when my parents were growing up in the 90s, they were able to get $20,000 loans to put on a down payment on a house, and that's how much they uh, cost back right, then. Right, right. So it made sense to start working but, on but your that, credit earlier. But then you get, like, a house. Yeah, I get that, but, like... And but money the, see, was a lot more But, like, we should be able to... Then. Like, getting loans they to, to do stuff us. like that, it should be really easy, but it's not. You have to have not had a now. credit card. And, like, well, what if I don't want to buy frivolous shit all the time to or like even i guess you could like buy groceries and buy gas with your credit card yeah but the thing is is like when you have those large amounts that's not what you're buying it for and exactly and also just like i don't they want it's like hangling dangling the fucking carrot i think like, in I those cases i don't it's trust like, myself I, I think in those cases it's like an option for everyone but the best case scenario is if that card's in the pocket leo stop yeah if that like card is pinch. in the pocket of a yeah. um, no no of a um of a real estate agent mm. because you're now buying houses off of assets of debt. Yeah. Like you're going, you're like, they're able to get more assets because of how much debt they it's have. Just crazy. And it's like a trust thing. That I've they've paid built with like my car. I've paid a car off. I've paid, I've paid payday loans off. Like, like to the point to where like, I maybe paid like the one time fee of like 20 bucks. But the thing is that like, I was desperate. Like there's days where you're yeah, like, I'm not getting paid it. until Friday. Well, that's Rent's due today and I'm not paying the late payment. So I'd rather pay this much than pay my fucking late payment. That's you know? the system of being poor because like we end up paying the most in fees and percentages. Or overdraft because check hits tomorrow, but bill came out today type shit. Right. Or that $35 that Wells Fargo keeps getting my ass for. Oh, my fucking God. You know, you can call them and ask them to reverse it. Yeah, I do it every freaking time. Because, like, why Why are they you taking my money? I, I don't know who did this. It's, on, it's uh, what do I, what do I say? This is a unauthorized charge. 
<laughs> oh, and I wonder if they have to do it because they, they have they to. They be pushed if you say it's unauthorized. Well, sometimes they might ask you to cancel your card, so be careful of doing that. But there have been times where I've been hit up on like multiple charges because they were all pending. And Wells Fargo is notorious for letting charges like process later. Oh, I know. They do that on purpose. They literally do that on purpose. So, so I I like call and attest it every time. I was like, hey, I didn't know that this was coming through at the same time as this. And half the time it's like an Apple Pay charge or like Instacart for like ninety nine dollars. And I'm well, like, are you freaking literally, kidding me? Literally, I've gotten overdraft fees because I had Acorns and it was like rounding up my money. <sighs> and Acorns, so then I'm like trying to. Oh, get and Acorns acorn just raids. It's just. So I'm like, oh, so then, but then I'm like out because I'm not taking. I mean, there was a point where I did have to take the money out of Acorns, but I don't like. Or I just have to, like, you know, it's just annoying. It's frustrating. That is. That sounds aggravating. Um, so, any topics or challenges that are particularly important to you right now? Mm-hmm. Like, what is on your brain more than normal these days? Other than your what your video normal? game. What is the name of the video game again? Stardew Valley. Yeah, other than Stardew Valley. I would Valley. say more than normal is probably, like, just my health. And, like, the way my body feels. Because I feel like there was... I truly, when I was younger, would be like... Oh, I'll deal with that later. Just, like, this later... It's, like, being ADHD, you get, like, the notification. And you're, like, remind me later, remind me later, remind me later. And that's, like, I feel like a lot of things about my life have been that way. Such as working out for the sake of um, health and mental health eating regularly and at given times for the sake of health and mental health and um you know just maintaining things like getting my nails done and getting and like things it's like self-care stuff yeah and i mean like i've been but like to the in a in a way that it's an afterthought because i've never put in the effort to make things like that like brushing my teeth where it's it's just things that I do and it's not it doesn't take a bunch of mental energy or anything like that you know and it adds to it and it helps me you know like if I don't I mean there's certain things like getting my nails done it's not really gonna do much but it does you know it makes me feel good and so it makes me feel good to maintain myself and so in the small ways it also leads into the bigger ways of being like well I can't have a dirty closet having nails that look this good you know like and those you start to do those things co- subconsciously because you like kind of having the standard that you want to hold yourself to mm-hmm. no, because it feels good. good to have like you know feel like you have your shit together and your nails are done not like one or the other i feel that no if i i have to like keep my routine of like cleaning my face and like keeping my hair done because if I don't I'll mm-hmm. feel like a bum and then everything becomes bummish. Oh yeah, for, <laughs> for me too cleaning my face is like a huge a huge thing. And like like just on top of cleaning sure it but like doing colored. like cleanses and like face masks and stuff yeah. like really taking into I that self care. I facial oil. Like literally going to like Safeway and getting like just the vitamin E oil that they have in the in the vitamins department. Like, that's all you need. I mean, that's, like, it's, like, nine bucks, and that shit, and it's thick, especially in Colorado, and it lasts you, like, six months. It's nine bucks. You don't need to go to, like, especially vitamin E oil, I feel like. I love vitamin E oil. And I used to use, like, this concoction of, um, I would make make my own concoction every time I sat down, depending on, like, how my skin felt that day. Yeah. But I I have to, I haven't, like, re, I, like, ran out of all those oils, have to repurchase them, but they were literally just, like, um hemp oil and rosehip oil and there was one that i really really liked that kind of smelled like what did it start with um i had a jojoba and there was another one but it's like more of a mustier smelling smelling one but it was like these they all have different oil textures Mm -hmm. and so like i don't know some things help others like in some yeah i don't know in some point it's just fun to be like well i want a little more of this today you know right it's like kind of picking and have you ever seen that scene in shrek where they like go to the fairy godmother's like headquarters oh yeah but like 
her in her room That's like out we... like outside of like the outs like where she does all her potions because it's like a it looks like a warehouse almost yeah, like yeah. where you could like process mass shipping but even her little headquarters like she's doing her little potions here and there that's how i feel like when i have all my stuff laid out Uh uh-huh um and i'm like doing my face routine and stuff and also i feel like the doing those things like for me having dry hands like and that's been something i've been working on this year too and uh, so much sunscreen on your hands Mm, yeah and oh yeah that's something that i also do so like have been doing a lot of twos making sure that I, even if I don't think I'm leaving the house that day, I'll put sunscreen on because mm-hmm. it's because in Colorado it's just like you can never use not like you can never use too much. And also like even though I guess we just have a higher rate of skin cancer than other places and and it's and it's because we are outdoorsy and whatnot. But like just because we're not in a bikini does not mean that we don't have exposed skin. Right. Know? Honestly, I feel like you being in your house and being exposed to the sun not wearing sunscreen is just as um harmful as being outside in maybe a like a lower place like on one side of your face yeah too. my yeah. grandma doesn't play that actually now that i think about it i remember her because she used to live in florida and she got like the highest tint that was legal but on top of that she would have like a plastic what looked like a you know how you can have like color gels for like a light on set mm-hmm. and it looks like a binder clip divider like the little color she had like a gray like a dark gray version that she would basically put in the window and then roll it up and like keep her hands there to make sure it stays locked That's so that it's extra covered so that half her face is not being oh my god she also taught me to rub upwards this woman did not have a wrinkle when she passed at 83 yeah she damn. did not play That's- about that's real yeah <laughs> i didn't even like put two and two together till now That's that she funny. was doing that because i'm like why are you being so extra right now it's a tinted window grandma but no, uh, she, she would literally stop the car use both of her hands put it in the window and use both hands to make sure that it's secure but like only this much is hanging outside so that he can actually protect the whole window that's crazy in her little honda hrv that's funny <laughs> That is, and and that's funny that she would take it out. You think you would just leave it there? Was it not see through? It was, but I I don't remember. I don't know when she. I think like if we're in a drive through, oh, she needs to speak yeah. to somebody. Yeah. It comes down, so she'll just. And like God forbid, somebody comes to the window because it's a whole event. She's like, Oh my God! She got it folded up perfectly. I love that woman. That's so- <laughs> yeah, again, but that that sun really, it's like water. And I quit. I quit smoking and I quit vaping too but i do be hitting other people's vapes when i go out sorry no guys. you're really you're really doing it i'm so yeah. proud of you thank you um so before i asked you to come here today i asked you to bring something um that you can't live without a product a device a gadget a face cream something more people should know about or like a thing if you don't have like a physical object um an app well first of all my cool. telefunken m80 that's the handle's white and the and the microphone cap is gold. And is that a, like a, spe- a special microphone? It's, it's it's just like kind of an upgrade from an SM58, which is like kind of like the standard, like what a lot of people have, like especially if you're not Miley Cyrus or something. Got it. Um, is it like a desk it's a mic? Performance mic. It's a okay. performance mic. So mine's, mine's the M80 Telefunken, and it's just kind of like I did research on like which microphones would house my voice the best. And so, um, yeah, I love that thing. And it's custom painted. I paid an extra hundred dollars to have it custom painted. And it took like four or five months to get to me Ooh. because it was back ordered <laughs> because, um, I don't know. I ha- actually have another, I bought studio monitors and I'm still waiting on my second one because, and I'm like, it's been, I don't even know, four months. Mm, since you ordered it? Yeah. Oh, that's not good maybe is it on back order maybe three months was it on back order when you were no not when i bought it so wait tell me more about this mic what is it what color is it and why can't you live without well okay we know why you can't live without it because it it matches your voice perfectly but like how did you research that like what even do you look for when you are looking well i asked like i would ask people around me and then i also was like like listening to people comparing them and stuff too on so if somebody like was making music and they like asked you the same question you were asking them oh i would, would recommend them? it to them okay I w- it's, it's honestly like like even i had i did this 
show little like free hip-hop show uh, up in fort collins at a kava bar and like one of the other performers saw me play after and they were like after they played Mm -hmm. and they were asking me about my microphone because they were like yeah i was looking at one and they like they did like just straight up rap and like talking in them Mm -hmm. but i just feel like um it's just like it's just a warm i'm just partial to it honestly i mean it's really splitting hairs it's kind of because you can't like hear something the right way (laughs) no but it honestly does boil down to that because i i remember when i'm like editing audio um when i was going to film school that like certain things it just feels better people's put people off and something is like hits the sweet spot for certain people i'm just not a fan of high-pitched sounds in any microphone and i think that this microphone kind of helps cut it how would you like describe it in adjectives is it like smooth smooth like i would say full okay and um warm i guess because it like i feel like it catches the lows and it it, like feels good you know and the and the you know and it makes the highs feel good too i think and 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 for my voice the way my voice sounds anyways because that's obviously like the most data that i have to compare it to is hearing it in my voice but gosh and like hearing it back too and you like it in comparison to like your other stuff before well i mean like in comparison to an sm58 yeah i mean like it's again like i'm still going to be proud of her performance but i just think that you're leveling up right now with their with their new mic yeah and i think it's a statement it being the colors it is and which is why i paid the extra hundred dollars wait what color is it it's white on the handle and gold on the cap and then like the little telephone symbols gold too and it's it's so slick and i just love it and like green and gold and white i feel like go together really well yeah and it's not i just i feel like a green microphone was like too much chintzy yeah i just like unless it's like this color green because i would go for that sure yeah totally or like um yeah, just it would have to be like done in a classy way. I wouldn't want something to look like a toy microphone. I feel that. All right, and last question: What are you looking forward to most um, this year with your music? Um, I guess. Or like, what project out of them? Getting getting my EP out in June, and I'm headlining your mom's house in June on a Friday night, and I've put together the whole lineup, and it's gonna be really sick and i'm really excited it's gonna be mostly like djs and i'm gonna perform um so it'll be a nice breakup then yeah so it'll be like um like mostly dance party and then listening to me sing your music is dance party-esque Thank though you. like I, that's why i say it's a good breakup but yeah yeah and also like i wanna i don't know i i did invite um another like r&b kind of singer to play but i'm not sure um if they're gonna pull through but i hope they do um but i'm also for people huh are you still looking for people um i'm open to it for sure i've got um do you like want people to hit you up um they for collaborations and stuff i mean fuck yeah i'm definitely down for that for this show i don't know if i'd be able to book them but they could come (laughs) and we can book the show together in the future (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) um just because i have to get like the lineup out to the venue like asap i should have done it already (laughs) i just finished the get to it stop playing that damn game see that's the thing about like i know i know (laughs) right i'm just being (laughs) seriously though literally but like at the same time like with that stuff there was a lot of things where i had to like reach out to people and i had to wait for them to get back to me and like also like find certain people because of like the vibe that i wanted it to be right um and i wanted to be able to like talk about my ep and all that shit without like i don't know i guess feeling like i was taking away from another act that i had booked you know so i, I don't want to take away from anybody I'm just <laughs> that sounds a little bit uh high and mighty but the thing is is i guess i just want to be able to f- express myself without like yeah trying to read too much into myself too by having um some djs because they're great musicians as well i mean a lot of them also uh saying or write songs or whatever too but they're also good djs so any final thoughts that you want to leave us with um there's always a new baseline and then you gotta go to the next level but it's really just like the same thing over again just like 
different furniture, same house, different furniture, you know, <laughs> constantly. And that's okay. Any tips for getting through that, that phase of going to the new baseline? Well, it's, I mean, it's really fun to get new furniture for the house, you know, <laughs> like, and then, I don't know, you collect things and you like, uh, when you finally like your space too, I can tell you like when you, I don't know, kind of align it with who you are in that moment. It feels good. And you're just going to be constantly doing that. And the whole point of this is to just, the practice is bringing yourself back. And like, that's literally the point. Like, good enjoying, job. You did it. Enjoying it's, the side quest yeah. and the little mini task. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you're going to do it over and over again forever. And it's actually really fucking fun, dude. Like, I gotta only, get you game. only have to play the mini games you want to play. Yeah, it's you not don't have to do from, them. Yeah. Exactly. And you can do them all. And maybe you, you want to do them at any point later. of your life. Exactly. At any like, point of your life. Oh as many times as you want. Exactly. Well, thanks for coming to the Gabby Thank show. Thank you for having me. Thanks for letting me ramble. Of course. Come back soon. Bring your friend Brooke. <laughs> I will. That would be very fun. Um, yeah. I want to cheers the microphones. Yeah, that, we should do that. <laughs>